So we would like to find and classify the critical points of uh, the function f of xy equals 3x squared y plus 48xy plus 4y squared. And let's recall that uh, by critical point, uh, we mean a point where uh, the gradient of the function is equal to zero. This is a point where we would hope that there exists a um, local extremum. Uh, but of course, it can be what we also call a uh, saddle point or a pringle point. <laughs> uh, this is a term uh, due to uh, Terence Tao, who uh, of course observed that, that uh, the kind of configuration that uh, we have at a saddle. So what is useful that we use about a saddle is that we have these two paths along which uh, the function has a local minimum and then a local maximum, which of course um, does not allow the existence of a local extremum uh, because of the two separate behaviors. And uh, we encounter pretty much the same thing with a Prinkle. Of course, that would be like uh, um, doing math and uh, promoting Prinkles at the same time. But regardless, I think it's a very uh, nice observation because we see Pringles more, more often than we see saddles. But in any case, um, the bottom line is that uh, in order to, once we have a critical point, in order to uh, find what kind of situation uh, we have in our hands, uh, we compute this um, uh, determinant consisting of second order partial derivatives. And uh, there are the following conclusions that one can draw. If d is less than zero, then we indeed have a um, saddle or Pringle point. If d is greater than zero, then there are two cases, uh, either uh, fxx at ab is positive. Positive is the shape of a smile. The shape, the shape of the smile is uh, what implies a local minimum. Right, you can visualize it here. Okay, here's your local minimum and if this is less than zero, then we have a local maximum. Again, I hope you can visualize it. Here's your local maximum. Please note that uh, this uh, criterion, which is known as the second derivative test, uh, does not tell us anything about the case that d is equal to zero. In uh, such a case, we will have to uh, go beyond the second Taylor polynomial, which is what implicitly is examined uh, with D. Uh, so hopefully we're not going to encounter uh, many such cases or <laughs> maybe at all in, in our course. But with equipped with this result, let's now try to uh, solve this problem. And you will see that uh, I will try to solve it with as uh, much little need to do uh, multiplications that take us uh, over to three digits as I can. So let's see if we can uh, do this. So first of all, let's find the derivative. So what are the derivatives? The derivative with respect to x is 6xy. Actually, maybe I should write the function once more so that it's visible here. So I remind you that the function is uh, 3x squared y plus 48xy plus 4y squared. 
and f sub x is equal to 6xy plus 48y and f sub y is going to be to th equal to 3x squared plus 48x plus 8y. Okay, so when we do our um, differentiations, obviously we consider the uh, all variables as constants with the exception of the one we're differentiating with respect to. So uh, how do we solve uh, such a system? Uh, so, so here it's a, a little different from the situation that we uh, saw in a previous example. Uh, we, we cannot really uh, solve directly. Well, we could. We could solve directly with respect to y, the second equation. But let's set them equal to 0. And then let me start with the first equation because it's a little simpler. So I can factor out a uh, 6y, right? And what I'm left with is x plus 8 is equal to 0. So from here, um, I have the product of three quantities. Well, 6 can never be 0, but either y has to be 0 or x plus 8 has to be 0. And the plan is to, to just consider these two situations along with the second equation and pretty much find our critical point. So why don't we start with y equals 0? So if y equals 0, then we resort to, to the second equation where we plug in y equals 0 and we find uh, 3x squared plus 48x is equal to 0. And now again, uh, from here, we can factor out uh, 3x. And this will give us x plus um, 16 is equal to 0. Uh, and from here, this means that either x is 0 or uh, x is equal to negative 16. OK, so that gives us immediately um, two points. So since we combine them with y equals 0, so we have 0, 0 is one critical point, And the other will be negative 16, comma 0. So we get two critical points from here. And then let's consider the case that x plus 8 is equal to 0, which of course means that x is equal to negative 8. And let's plug it into the um, second equation, where now we can find uh, y immediately. And let me actually try to, to find it without doing this multiplication. So I have what? I have 3 times negative 8 square, which is the same thing as 8 square, right? Plus 48 times negative 8 um, plus 8y equals 0. So now I can divide through by 8 everything. And that will give me 3 times 8. Remember, negative 8 square is the same as 8 square. So I silently drop the negative sign. Um, minus 48 uh, plus y is equal to 0, uh, which of course uh, will give me um, minus 24 plus y equals 0, which means that y is equal to 24. So we obtain another a critical point, so we have minus 8 and 24. And this means that we have to study these three critical points. And to do so, so this is the process of finding the critical points is complete. And what we want to do now is find the second order partial derivatives. So let's do that. So what is fxx? I'm looking at f sub x and do one more differentiation that would give me 6y. And then uh, what is fxy? Again, I'm looking at f sub x and now differentiate with respect to uh, y. So this gives me 
uh, 6x plus 48. And finally, I um, take the second f sub y and differentiate it again with respect to y. And that gives me simply 8. Okay, so these are our uh, three derivatives. And uh, let's take it now point by point. So if we start with 0, 0, what is d? So uh, d will be uh, fxx at 0, 0, so 6 times 0, that's 0. And fyy is 8, that doesn't change. And um, fxy at 0, 0 is simply 48. OK, so this will give me minus 48 squared, uh, which is, I don't care how much it is. All I care uh, about is that it's less than 0, which means that this is a subtle point. Or Pringle, it doesn't matter. So, in fact, this means that we have no uh, local extremum here. So, now let's look at negative 16, 0. And uh, this is going to be what? Uh, so, we will have uh, 6 times 0, which is 0, uh, for f sub xx. And then uh, we will have... Um, fxy is 6 times negative 16, that's negative um, 96. Negative 96 plus 48, that's negative 48 here. And of course, negative 48 there. And I also have an 8 here. So this is minus negative 48 square, which is, of course, a negative number. And again, this is a saddle or Pringle point. And let's do the last one, which is negative 8, uh, 24. And here I will have uh, 6 times uh, 24. And um, now 6 times, uh, now f sub x y of negative 8, 24 is 6 times negative 8 is negative 48. Uh, plus 48, that's 0. That's very nice here. And then we get an 8. And now we see that this is 6 times 24 times 8. Again, I have no immediate uh, uh, interest in finding this number. All I care about is the fact that it's greater than 0, which means that we have a local extreme. And then I turn to fxx. Uh, at this point, which is positive, so fxx at negative 8, 24, uh, which is positive, and this implies that we have a local minimum. Please notice that uh, we can equally look at fyy at, uh, at the same point, which of course is 8, and we would have drawn the same conclusion. And so the three critical points that we found correspond to two saddle points and one local minimum. And that's all. Thanks for watching.